Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Monster Camp, aka Monster Camp Prom 2. Are you ready for your summer love? We return for the game that launched another crazy amount of love for wonderful games such as this. So we are going to do another ending today. I know, I know, I'm a little behind on some of the endings, but we're going to do one that shouldn't be too hard to get. It's a drink ending, so it should be fine. Ah, Camp Spooky, the stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then we were young and unafraid. With school far away, everything seemed possible as the sun embraced us on our way to camp. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days while the nights inebriate you with possibilities. It's like life could take a turn at every corner. And for us, it did. Well, we could take the alternate costumes, but you know I gotta be Brian. It ain't no questions. Uh, okay. I mean, it, it's me. Alright, now, how should we do this? We'll take the tarot, the marshmallows, and. hmm. We'll take the recorder. One might say that Monster Prom had hardened us on the highs and lows of love. But no, in love we're always absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of a summer love loomed over our heads. And normally we would go for one of these fine individuals, but unfortunately, we don't care about any of them. They are not our choice. But we must give them credit. Close to the last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening just three weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prom all over again. Everything seemed uncertain, everything but one thing. Whether we were asking on a meteor shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Jojima, 23, a badass witch who wanted a chill bit after saving the world countless times. Araravi Mishra, 22, a hot-blooded adventurer possessed by a curse who turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Calculator Hewood Packet, version 1.1, a library computer who would become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Dahlia Aquino, 20, a buff blue demon and warmonger who would set her sights on conquering summer next. Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, 23? A death reaper doubling as an internet influencer and who is profoundly in love with life and all of its earthly pleasures. The bus trip was long and all of summer could be shaped by the first step well taken. And so it was clear, it all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. Hmm. Hmm. I do enjoy saving the world. Ah, fellow hero, I see. I'm glad I don't be saving the world alone this summer, Brian. Normally I'd have my besties hope and faith by my side while we face evildoers, but sadly Dad didn't come to camp this summer. I guess it's healthy for us to have some breaks from each other sometimes, but still, you should never go to feeding evil alone. World saving buddy is always a very important resource. We only had three weeks to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid. And we were ready. To start. But again, we're not going for joy. We're only here for one specific ending. Here's hoping the ending okay. comes on the first try, but let's, go. let's give it a shot, shall we? So, hmm. Who should we do first? I feel like the going to the lake. That day at the lake, you start a super soaker fight that turns into an all out war. The enemy team manages to capture the northern section of the lake, but you take a few of their members hostage and learn their empire's weaknesses. You lead a full-scale infiltration. Thousands of soldiers get totally soaked. Trademark, it's a bloodbath. After several hours, the enemy team surrenders and you gain plus two fun from the peace treaty. Yay! You meet up with Joy to do a little light reading on the lakeshore. You figure she digs scholarly types, so this could be for your end. Hey, you. 
Hey, thanks for agreeing to be hang out and read with me. Can't wait to sit next to you and not talk for several hours. Just so exhausting being a hero all the time. Do you know how many hell mouths I've had to seal today? 69. And then another one just so the demons couldn't be snickering about it. Finally, I can read in peace. <sighs> but that's all over for the today. Now it's just you, me, and the first book of Lev Grossman's The Magicians. Just because summer doesn't mean I have to stop studying. But just as you're about to settle into your respective books, a wave crashes on the shore. When it recedes, you see a sea lion wearing a fedora? Pardon me, says the sea lion, but I couldn't help but overhear you mentioned Lev Grossman's The Musicians. As an aquatic creature of discriminating taste, I feel it is my duty to inform you that the book you like is far inferior to the other classics of the fantasy genre. The mere fact that there exists a TV adaptation of the book you're reading should tell you something. He continues, rolling his sea lion eyes condescendingly. You'd be much better off reading a real fantasy novel like Sword of the White Nail Protagonist or Chainmail Sluts. <sighs> Uh, that's great, but I didn't ask for your opinion. You were literally just washed up on the shore and invited. There's no need to be so hostile, crooms the sea lion. I merely wanted to have a civil discussion about why your taste in literature is inferior to mine. I would hate to have to call the lifeguard over and explain that one of the beachgoers is heaping verbal abuse upon the local wildlife. You're not a big bad, but you're still very bad at this. Uh, why can't you just leave? me to study in peace. I've had a long day and I 100% don't need this. I'll leave, says the seat line. As soon as you engage me in a fair and impartial debate for four hours on a topic you never want to discuss in the first place. Okay, the lake has sea trolls. No, it's a trap. According to the monster manual you were reading, sea lions can only be defeated by trolling them so hard they disintegrate. You give it your best shot. Enrage him by claiming that your favorite Shakespeare play is A Midsummer Night at the Museum. Respond to everything he says with, that's what she said. I think we know the answer here. And the answer is, that's what she said. You share your plan with Joy. She seems skeptical. Uh, really? That's it? You're sure that's gonna work? Go ahead and try, says the sea lion. I can take it. That's what she said. You reply. Too easy. Oh, come on, that didn't count, says the, says the sea lion. I wasn't ready. That's what she said. You calmly retort. Seriously? Wait, is this actually working? It's not working, says the sea lion, visibly shaking. I've got, I've got this whole thing well in hand. That's what she said. You crow. <laughs> wow, you think you learned to just shut up. I will not shut up, squeals the sea lion. You should be ashamed of yourself behaving this way. In fact, I'm ashamed to even be acquainted with you. That's what she said. Going in for the kill. And by she, I mean your mom. Uh, that's it, screams the sea lion. You've won this round, but I'll return. And when I do, you'll never see me coming. The hell yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> I can be juvenile too. That last bar was too much for the shitty sea lion. With a sound of profound indignation, he explodes into several casually voracious fish. The fish swim away. I underestimated you. Great blame, right? Damn, that felt good. Should we do something about those fish, though? You tell her it's probably okay, since fish, due to the lack of opposable thumbs, can't use Twitter. You settle back into your books and manage to gain plus two smarts and plus one creativity. Brown, brown. So many choices. I feel like getting waterlogged. That day you decide to go scuba diving. You're a zombie, how does that work? And find a treasure chest at the bottom of the lake. Whoa! You pick the lock, and which is quite impressive if you keep your mind that you're still underwater. Inside you find over 1,000 fun! Unfortunately, your wetsuit doesn't have pockets, so you can only go back to shore with only plus two fun. When you go back, fish have eaten the rest. They're having a rave right now. Fucking fish. You break off from the group a little early to attend a CPR class at the lifeguard shack. You never miss a CPR class. Because you're a creep. Luckily for you, you, two of your smoking hot campmates are already there when you arrive. Damien doesn't seem happy about it though. I mean, 
He's wearing a winter outfit while she's wearing a fantasy girl outfit. Lame. The hell is this, Joy? You said you'd teach me water magic today. Ugh. No, I didn't. You said it. With that stupid sock puppet you made of me while doing a frankly offensive impression of me. Damn. That always works on Scott. But come on. Why are we at this stupid class? That was magic. Because saving lives is true magic, Damien. Huh? Wait, like actual magic? If I say yes, will you shut up and take the class? For sure. Always the same. Then yes, we're learning actual magic. Fuck yeah! I'm gonna use it to kill people. On duty. What's up? Welcome to our super chill CPR class. I'm Wanda. This is still you again. We know your names. We've been going to school together for years. Have we? <laughs> Lord, I didn't know. Mind blown. Ah, oh, phew, that's a relief. I was like 90% sure those were our names. You can never be too sure, you know. <laughs> anyway, I hope you dudes are ready for the kickback, throw on some tunes, and remind us how to do CPR, because we have totally forgot. <gasps> Wait, you want us to teach you CPR? But you're the teachers. Look, we really don't believe in rigged hierarchies, okay? Student, teacher, what's the difference? I, I mean, we definitely remember some of how to do CPR, we just don't remember what the first step is, like, at all. Blame. What? This is bullshit! I'm never gonna learn magic at this rate! And you're never gonna get to do the part where you put your lips on other people's lips. Come on, say something. What's the first step for performing CPR? Performing CBR, always check your mouth to make sure it's not busy eating some delicious pasta. Mmm, I eh? Just remember the acronym CPR, cry, pray, recruit someone who actually knows CPR. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for pasta. Dude. <laughs> Are you sure, dude? I swear we watched an instructional video where mouth to mouth pasta passing was emphasized. <laughs> yeah. I totally remember that. That's why we swapped out our life preservers for a barrel full of pasta. This instructional video, were either of the participants, you know, drowning? Uh, you know what? I don't think they were. It must have just been really effective CPR. Ugh. <sighs> and in this video, were the participants dogs by any chance? Um, oh my god, they totally were. You must have been watching the same video. Yeah, it was Lady and the Tramp. You watched the Lady and the Tramp and you thought it was a video about how to do CPR. It's not. The Sid Disney movies are the source of so many valuable life lessons. Like, always believe in yourself and Alice in Wonderland is a fucked up movie. Does it make sense, you know? After all past it, it's life and life is what we're trying to save when we do CPR. I mean... I, sometimes when it gets late at night, I'll be watching TV and suddenly I'll think, Man, if I don't get some lasagna in me, I'll literally die. I used to say the people drowning in the lake don't feel the same way. Maybe that's why they're drowning. Whoa. It's like a cry for help. But instead of help, it's pasta. That's deep stew. So anyway, yeah, that's why we always regurgitate pasta into people's mouths while we're giving them CPR. I think I just saw the mystery behind the extremely high number of drowning deaths at camp this year. Oh yeah, definitely, it's uh, all their fault and has nothing to do with me for sure. Damien casually stops drowning three dudes, hoping nobody noticed. <laughs> but you're saying our mouths shouldn't be full of blast when we do mouth to mouth? This is revolutionary. You should be teaching this class, Brian. So teach the class you do, you insist that everyone skip straight to mouth to mouth touching. So you can all practice rubber lip positioning. It's a little more clinical than you expected. But it's not clearly as odd. Not just being this close to your crushes gains you plus two charm and plus one smart. And now the real challenge. The night will be the night of the living dead. Hmm. Sit next to Mossman. Hello! Hello. Ryan! 
I was just in the middle of a date with this sexy campfire, but I could put in a standby if you're here to share some juicy gossip. You're not, you just want to chill by the campfire. That wasn't a question or a suggestion. Give me some gossip or prepare to join the campfire. What? Is, is, is he pointing a gun at you? Gosh, this dude is in dire need of some gossip. Well, you have some appreciation for your life, so let's con 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 some lies and gossip for this psycho to spread. Hmm. Cocaine fueled interpretive dance. And Lord Poseidon. Hashtag so. I can't resist the joke. Brian. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing this with me. My murderous desire for gossip has been stated. For now. Now if you'll excuse me, I'll have to repeat this process as well of spreading your rumor around camp. You there, I have a question. Would you like to hear this amazing rumor or do you want your life to end right here now? You make the conscious decision to spread lies around camp. Great move, asshole. Anyway, you overhear your rumor being spread. Hey. You ever hear about the time Brian wrote a tweet that went totally viral? Hmm. Apparently, back in 2016, Brian drank one too many wine coolers and tweeted out, Sorry for that concept of cocaine fuel interpretive dance. It's totally problematic. Hashtag so Brian. Hmm. The tweet blew up overnight and nobody would shut up about Brian's hot take. I heard hashtag so Brian even started trending. Of course, such a spicy opinion is going to receive some backlash. Apparently, the Wii Wii community was pretty unhappy with that. What Brian had to say. But then a viral account run by Lord Poseidon tweeted, Yo, at Brian, he's totally in the right. Want to talk about it more on my podcast? Hashtag so Brian. So Brian agreed to be on Lord Poseidon's podcast. And apparently, he's been promoting ever since. But do you think about that? Maybe, maybe we shouldn't glorify somebody based on a tweet that they wrote so many years ago. But it's, it's something to think about. Well, viral flame may is fleeting, but gossip is forever. Brian gains plus war creativity. Bring out your flasks! Mm, I'll take my choices. The weekend is finally here, which means it's time to visit your favorite feline friend, Juan. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Welcome. Here for another free drink. Go nuts, just remember to drink those dubious concoctions responsibly. Yeah. We're going for one specific. A literal Molotov cocktail. This is not the kind of cocktail you want to drink. Or better keep it in case you need to start a revolution. You never know. I could use a drink. Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. I mean, literally, I just wanted to warm my insides. The fire wasn't hot enough. Now, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Let's get... You know what? Let's get some more fun. While looking around the lake for a private place to pee, take a pee, you find a treasure map buried in the sand. It leads to an X in the center of the lake. You gather a crew of trusted friends, don your eye patch, and sail out there to find the booty. When you arrive, you find a tiny island with a single palm tree. You dig up a box that says, open in case of a very boring day. You open the box to find, plus two fun. Arr! After that, and like five other dumb bits, you head over to the dome to finally blow off some steam with that Molotov cocktail you've been saving. You're about to throw it at a group of ghouls who probably deserve it. That's the great thing about Camp Spooky, everyone deserves to be on fire, when... Ah, I see you are too a devotee of revolution. I can tell by your lit Molotov cocktail and your de obvious desire to throw it. But wait... How do I know you're truly a revolutionary and not a spy sent by the Chancellor to seduce me with your grandiose promises and moderate politics? You're probably going to say that I trust you implicitly, that your mysterious eyes and irresistible body are all proof I should need of your loyalty. It's true, and yet, this is exactly what a servant of the Chancellor would say. You don't understand the depths of his villainy. Or perhaps you do, but how can one go so enticing? serve someone as vile as the Chancellor. The I have seen him. He is hideous, tall and lumpy, replete with fascism. Surely you do not serve him. You must have some reason for your... some grievance against him which proves your eternal position to 
opposition to his regime. Seriously, do you? My frenzied monologue is over now. You may can answer. But answer first. The views on your Molotov cocktails kinda short. I vow to destroy the Chancellor, for he is the war criminal who banned Dodgeball from the Dome. My god, you're right. I haven't realized that the noble revolution sport of Dodgeball was banned here. Extreme Dodgeball is allowed, and Mega Deadball, Dodgeball, and Dodgeball, although I think that's just one of Morty's sex things. But those allowances are mere crumbs thrown to the masses, who have had their Dodgeball taken away from them. If we return to the original position as theorized by John Rawls, and attempt to design a society without knowing what role we will fill in it, we can see. Dodgeball is the first thing we could include. It is fundamental to a free and just society. You might ask why is the ability to throw a bunch of balls at your friend such a cornerstone of liberty? But if you did, I would kill you for being an enemy of the revolution. Everyone knows that dodgeball is the very first thing. All totalitarian dictators outlaw. They are afraid of its power. As the saying goes, first they come for the dodgeball. And I said nothing because I was not that dodgeball. I'm impressed that you know so much about the revolutionary principles. Also that you are not at all phalaced by how that Molotov cocktail just blew up in your hand. Oh shit, it did. You were absorbed by Badness's rant that you forgot you were on fire. It's okay though, Badness used the opportunity to dress your burns in a totally PG-13 way. Join the you know, we could use someone like you in the resistance. Here, take this plus two bonus and plus one creativity. You'll need it in the days to come. When you look again, badness has vanished. Man, you're so stealthy and cool. Compared to when you were on fire earlier, so are you. You may ask why'd I give her a Spanish accent. So many choices. I literally could think of a voice. <laughs> we're going with it. Back to the water. You end a little late to get your tan on, but as soon as you get there, it starts to rain. Most of the BGOs leave, but no, you will enjoy a fun lake day, damn it. You had a really rough morning, I mean you were set on fire, and you won't even let anything else stop you from gaining fun. You aggressively splash in the lake and laugh as loudly as you can, hoping the clouds will give up on trying to ruin your day. Instead, the, the lake gets struck by lightning. When you awake from the electrocution coma, you're on shore, the sun is shining and you have a cool new facial switch. You win, plus you gain two plus fun. You're minding your own business, thinking about butts, when a hand reaches up or through the ground and grabs your ankle. Oh no, is it another one of your many victims? Nope, it's badness, straying you into a little underground meeting of the resistance. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Brian. Forgive the last minute invitation. You explain that luckily getting dra suddenly dragged underground is one of your kinks. That's not surprising though, everything is one of your kinks. Seriously. You see, it's precisely this raw sexual devotion to the cause of revolution that led me to recruit you in the first place. With this today are representatives from all the most notable summer camps in the area. We're the representatives of Camp Spooky and Camp Rival Camp, obviously. This here is Venezuela Gorblax from the Space Camp. She has nine arms and green skin, just like the revolution. Here we have Frank N. Furter from Camp Camp. He's... Uh, very charismatic. Editing self, look that up. Pleasure to meet you, says Frank, kissing your entire arm. And this is Big Dick Lone Wolf from Camp Tough Guy. Say hi, Big Dick. No. No. Says Big Mr. Lone Wolf, flexing penitently. I only showed up to this meeting to let you know I will not be showing up to any more meetings. What? But Lone Wolf, we need a reluctant muscle man to grudgingly join our cause, only to develop a heartfelt attachment to our group and rescue me during the climax. We will have to find some him somewhere else, says Lone Wolf, cause that ain't me, sister. Oh come on, can't you re in dramatically appropriate ways, like by staring moodily into the distance, or refusing to help at a critical time. Big Dick Lone Wolf stares grimly into the eyes of the bat-faced protagonist. Make me. 
he says. Join the resistance. No. He just wants to do it all. Someone convince him to join us. We can't have a revolutionary cadaver without at least one reluctant and predictable member. Violent and unpredictable member. Was your nickname at Spooky High? Oh wait, it was Old Thirsty. I mean... Whatever, you're totally... Got a way to convince this badass to join the cause. Hmm. Explain that by joining the revolution you'll all be eligible for cool group discounts. Or tell him the counselor said he was smelly. I mean, if somebody told me I was smelly, I would fight against them in an instant. Oh, come on. He's not going to care about that. He's a rugged avatar of toxic masculinity. Smell doesn't... He said what? Bellows Big Dig Lone Wolf, nearly collapsing the underground cavern in rage. I'll have you know I wear a bit patented cologne made of gunpowder and ground-up scorpions. He growls. I am not smelly. I exude a carefully crafted olfactory experience designed to evoke the feeling of being run over by a mountain lion driving an Abrams tank. <laughs> well, okay. Y yeah, the counselor totally said you're smelly and uh, that your skincare routine could use work. Are you fucking kidding me? How was the normal? I spend 30 minutes every day with a face mask of raw eggs and cruel words. This craggy visage is no accident, goddammit. Where the fuck is he? Big Dick cries. I'll show him a fucking skincare routine when I take his skin off and moisturize it. We'll get to that. But first, can you share that mace mask recipe with me? That honestly sounds super rejuvenating. Always happy to help out the fellow revolutionary, says Lone Wolf grinning. Comrade. The five of you spend the next several hours insulting some raw eggs and then spreading them over your faces. It really is invigorating. When all is said and done, you feel stronger, more rugged, and strangely pampered. You gain plus two boldness and plus one charm. You've made us a powerful ally today, brother. We'll continue this revolution soon, right after Big Dick teaches me how to make that cologne. I mean, that does sound like an interesting cologne. Sitting, my favorite activity. Hello, hello! Hi there, Brian. I have a business proposition for you. Wow, if you had a nickel for every time a re friend of yours proposed a business to you and uninvited. My idea is this, a magazine about Camp Spooky. It will feature stories about our fellow campers' lives, photography of our fellow campers' frolicking, salacious details about our fellow campers' intimate secrets. Okay... It's genius, no? The only problem is I need some groundbreaking gossip to get my publication off the ground. Something the other gossip reporters haven't gotten their greedy hands on yet. Would you know anything, perchance? Eh, fuck it. You've always wanted to give an interview, and this might be your only chance. Let's gossip. Mm. Mm. No. The basic ideas of promoting an epic rock show. And... Following the mysterious percepts of a very wise monk. Type in something you'd learn to do if you had a lot of free time, starting with a with a verb ending in ing. Hmm. I mean, let's be honest. Amazing. This will be our cover story for our debut issue, Brian with the Saucy Secrets. I'm going to do more sleuthing for stories. Catch you later. You spread your rumor like a butter spread on toast, and its warm, delicious goodness is eventually spread back to you. Hey, do you remember when Brian disappeared for like the entire month of February and no one knew why? I've been told the whole story. Come closer and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, this may sound weird, but Brian spent all of February hiding in his basement. And you might ask, how did that happen? Well, apparently there's one big reason for Brian following the mysterious percepts of a very wise monk. During that whole month and until he finally got out, Brian avoided getting going insane by editing. I mean, I go insane by editing anyway. Ugh. 
And what's more, he didn't come out with his hands empty. He got the basic ideas for a rock opera of epic proportion from that whole experience. Wait until I tell everyone. This will change everyone's opinion of Brian, and of spending your free time in your basement too. From this day forward, Brian is plus two creativity stronger. I'll take a gamble this time. Wigan arrives and so is the time to visit Juan, the small magical Latino cat. Yoko Hio, welcome to your ball. Really, I don't know who's in there right mind would take such a risk. I guess you have more thirst than you ain't common sense. Anyway, check this drink out. The Bloody Mary. Hmm. Will you take the drink of the day? Or would you prefer a dumb mystery box? Hmm. I'll be honest, I'll take the box. Ooh, the stat smoothie. Now that is a fantastic choice. The mystery box so bored of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refund. Delicious. I've managed to distill the stats that make us who we are. The result is this stat smoothie. With a huge delicious boost. Oh, Holy! <laughs> I would say that's a boost. Hope you can sell like that. Happy Twails. I even love its design. But I would say we're ready for any stat check. Okay. To the lake we go. That day you bring a magazine to read around the lake. The cover is How to Gain Fun While Camping with Your Six Hottest and Most Charismatic Friends. Step 1. Go to the lake. Step 2. Wait. What? That's it? Then why hasn't it worked for you yet? Oh wait, you just gained plus 2 fun. Thanks, Cosmo Paladin. Finally, I can read in peace. Oh, thank God. Finally, we have a little time to chill and sunbathe. I'm mean to work on my tan this summer. I'm hoping we can go from deathly pale to gothic white. There's a difference? Hmm. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Microdosing toxic levels of UV radiation in an effort to bronze one's skin it is one of the most aesthetically pleasing ways to slowly die. Ooh. While my skin is incapable of darkening, I am here to recharge. I installed solar panels exclusively to spend more time with my friends. Calculester. Summer okay. camp has taught me so many alternative ways of bonding with my organic beers. This afternoon will be perfect. Pizza for Milo and Joy. Sup? So, uh, I've got a pizza delivery for Milo and Joy. I guess standing makes you too crazy hungry or something. <gasps> I have no way to simulate consuming calories, my one weakness. Ugh, uh, are you serious? You, we did not order pizza unless pizza somehow became vegan overnight. Or this is a clearly disguised magical weapon for saving the world. Huh? I'm pretty sure this is just a large mushroom and pepperoni. But if you eat it, you'll save me from getting chewed out by the main manager for delivering pizza to the wrong person. Pizza? Uh, that hard pass. I despise delivery food. Jelly despises meat and dairy. And Calculester despises being excluded from activities. Be gone, thought. No, trust me, this is your pizza. Corporate even gave me this legal invoice that you all need to sign to prove that I'm not delivering the pizza wrong again. Luck. These are indeed your signatures. I think I understand what is going on here. Friend Pizza Girl, could I please borrow your phone for a moment? Uh -huh. Are you going to do something about her horrendous Instagram? Girlfriend, you have got to take some selfies wearing something other than that dingy delivery uniform. Mm -hmm. It is as I feared. According to the pizza parlor's internal delivery app, Joy and Milo did indeed order this pizza, but from an alternative reality. Worst episode ever. What? Ah, I fucking hate these multiverse products. They're so contrived and way too hard to follow. Whatever, man. Man, nah, not my problem. Point is, you do order this pizza, and policy says you have to pay for it and eat it before I can go. Oh, how tragic. Pay and eat? I'll do neither one. Thank you very much. Every day, we must ask ourselves what we are willing to put in your mouths, and this is where I draw the line. Well, if the pizza girl won't leave until you eat, the solution is clear. You have to find the versions of Joy and Milo that actually order the pizza. But how? Art lets you travel without leaving home. Pen a beautiful poem to open a rift between realities. You want to show an elite squad who travel through realities to fight entropy and save the multiverse. They could deliver the pizza. Hmm. I believe I'm feeling... a beautiful poem. Seriously? 
I mean, I get what you're going for, but I don't think it's going to work literally. I say let's give him Brian a shot. I'm always down to indulge high art, even if it's doomed to fail. We love that vote of confidence. You whip out your quill and pen and let the ink flow straight from the heart, penning the most beautiful poem known to men, women, or monsters. Okay, time for a dramatic reading. Ahem. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, softly singing, suddenly there came a ringing, as of someone gently dinging, donging at my chamber door. Tis the pizza girl, I uttered, footsteps thundering towards the door. <sighs> Only pizza evermore. So I got a little into it. Pizza is my passion. <laughs> wow, that was beautiful. And so haunting, I barely even cared what it was. Most plagiarizely. Awesomeness levels. Analysis. Critical. Poetry. Transposition. Levels. Critical. It's working. The interdimensional rift is opening. And before your eyes, as Milo... Besides, you're not ripped off a gothic poem out of a mysterious piece of history in the night. A portal opens, and on the other side, you see... Pizza forever. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've never seen this moment that that actually made me laugh. Thank heavens, the pizza is finally here. I knew I could count on Muncie Personal Milo to deliver a spectacular poetry reading and open the interdimensional rift. They're so smart and photogenic, and they're so in much into beauty and selfies as I am into mushroom and pepperoni pizza. Uh, you know it, queen. Pizza all the way! Well, it was either that or born. Anti-pizza universe Joy would use some complicated spell to open the portal. She used magic to solve her problems, but still can't understand the magic of hot, fresh pizza. Uh, hey, who are you calling born? Eating a variety of vegan foods and wearing clothes that are tastefully black and not some sort of cheese and sauce inspired train wreck is not boring. Casually looks at Sailor Moon outfit. Where's my tip? Oh sweet, you're here. Here's your pizza and here's your bill. Here's the line where you write your tip, which is underlined and highlighted. The interdimensional portal closes with your universe's pizza girl still inside. Uh, well, whatever. She's probably gotten lost in weirder places. Mm. Well, that was odd. Why on earth is Milo so into pizza in an odd alternate dimension? Enough of this. That's your question? Why does Brian Poem conveniently open a rift to the exact reality where we were looking out for the entire universe? Uh. Uh, this is exactly my problem with AU plot lines. There are no rules and the plot points don't matter. There's a joke there that I'm not even going to touch. Is this what people Perhaps it was the beauty and majesty of the pizza that was allowed this to work out. I would do not know. I would have never eaten it. You can ask all those questions, or you can just take the W and get to sunbathing. You gain plus two charm and plus one smudge for your beautiful poem. Welcome to the pizza dimension. Achievement unlocked. Okay. Let's go. I'm down for that. To the lake once more. You spend the day playing in the lake. Everything is fun until you're mesmerized by a strange song. It's the sirens. They try to lure you with their beautiful chants, but you know better and challenge them to a rip-off. They kick your ass, but you definitely have a lot of fun. More specifically, plus two fun. You set aside some time to work on your horny meditation, but badness shows up to ruin your chill. Brian, there you are. Now I need you to answer me honestly. Have you abandoned our noble pursuit of revolution? What? No, of course you haven't. You tell her you'd never abandon this revolution, because you're a good person who cares about things. Damn it! How long am I going to have to wait for you to abandon me? What? Uh, don't you know anything about plot dynamics? I will only discover my true strength when all small of my allies have betrayed me. Frank and further fucked off to planet Transylvania to frolic with all the other sexy vampires, and Venusia brutally attacked me. Though, honestly, I think she was more hungry than treacherous. Meanwhile, Big Dick Lone Wolf's off on some kind of solo mission that apparently involved bombing a hundred bucks off me for revolutionary binge drinking. So that just leaves you. And if you don't abandon me soon, I won't be able to have a, my crisis of fate or my triumphant rebirth and I'll never reach the climax. Your ears appear cut at climax because it's a sex word. You ask her to tell you more about this climax. Isn't it obvious? The climax of my hero's journey will be my final dramatic confrontation with the evil, treacherous chancellor. I'll look up into his huge, mustachioed, partially ghost-like face, and I'll say, Time's up, cock hat. 
or something like that. Uh, still workshopping it. And he'll scream, no! With one of his two distinct yet equally terrible voices. And I'll shoot him and then I'll win. Okay, that all sounds awesome! It'd be a shame if you'd had to abandon Badness before you got the opportunity to experience this climax of hers. Hmm, maybe there's a way to bring on the climax without having to cruelly betray your comrade. Hmm. Dramatically martyr yourself in a way that turns all the society against the Chancellor. Or just play some intense final showdown music and the showdown will come to you. I feel the showdown music. You're going to bring on the climax by playing music. But that seems totally backwards. Shh. You press your finger to Badness's lips while using another finger, different finger to press play on your dramatic montage boombox. Pensive strings murmur in the background as somehow Frankenfurter sheds a tear as he bids his pet many paramours farewell. Tension builds with the grim electronic bassline while Venusia touches the hair like ropes on the heads of very numerous sleeping broodlings. Will she ever return from this mission? The outlook is grim, but the optimistic electric guitar says otherwise. As the inspiring synth bass builds to a strident crescendo, even Big Dick Lone Wolf starts to cry as he, he walks away from his childhood home. Its roof already starting to burn. My god, it's working! I can feel the music building! The tension rising! Here it comes! Here it comes! Oh my f fucking god. It's Scott and Polly in one outfit. Oh my god. I'm so glad I did this. Here comes the beat drop. Oh yeah, baby. The Chancellor. Oh, oh. Shit, yeah. We're, we're the Chancellor. I, I mean, we're, I'm the Chancellor. Uh, woo ha ha ha. I guess that explains the comment about the two voices. Time's up, fuck Nick. Arrow shoot. As Badness's arrow speeds towards the Chancellor, he suddenly seems to split in half, becoming... Polly and Scott? But why were you the Chancellor? Well, it started out as a way to get into the R-rated movies, but then you swore vengeance on us and it kinda got out of hand. But what about my vendetta? What about my kidnapped sister? This dystopia? I don't know about those things. Maybe we did them? We do do a lot of pranks. Hmm. My whole life. And I. Uh, yeah, well, you know what they say. Parade! So, are we rolling in garbage now or what? You do go ahead. I only crawl through garbage when I'm fired with a keen revolutionary beauty. You follow Badness over to a nearby tree stump, where she sits sullenly. You ask her what's wrong. Oh, nothing, just. What am I supposed to leave for if I'm not the protagonist of some grandma papalyptic narrative, you know? Oh yeah, you totally. You tell her nothing worse than not being the protagonist. So... Wanna fuck off to town and get some smoothies? Y you know what? Uh, yeah, I kinda do. You and Badness have a great time in town. It's not a sex thing. She's not really horny for anyone who's not part of her trouble destiny. But it's nice to see her finally unwind. Looks like it took totally faking her own death to let Badness truly live. Uh, we didn't kill ourselves, but we'll just let that go. You gain plus two creativity and plus one charm. The last day of summer is here. Well, none of them. Because damn, I look fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. You ask none of them to go to the meteor shower because you'd prefer to check on your new friend, Badness. Hey, hey but I am. Sorry, I'm not in super in the mood. All this time, my whole thing has been toppling the terrible dictatorship of the Chancellor. And it turned out to just be two campers playing a stupid convoluted prank. I'm just... I'm in a strange place. I, I don't know where to go from here, you know? If that was all a prank, then what am I supposed to do now? You tell her she could just enjoy summer. Bask in her newly regained freedom. I guess I'm just a bit rusty. I haven't had fun for a while. Slowly pan to 25 fun. 
slowly pan back to her face. I think we can spare some. I was too busy fighting a dystopian, oppressive, and apparently fake government. But I guess I could give it a try. She's understandably conflicted. Her world has changed dramatically in mere days. And it's only natural that having fun and relaxing sounds like a fantasy for more someone in her situation. But you're willing to help. What awaits me now the Chancellor is gone? Truth be told, badness seems to be foreign to the science of having a good time. But you help her. You and her enjoy the last few days of summer together. A nice friendship has been forged from this. Yay. Long live the Chancellor. Achievement unlocked. Camp experience. Also, that is kind of funny. 181. 69. Nice. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like a lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it. How those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries. Wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss, every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry sky. No matter how many years go by. Even today, I can still close my eyes and I'm there. On that last summer night. Feeling like I was just starting to live life. With all my friends around that campfire. So young and unafraid. And so ready to start. To Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this episode. Well, not even an episode, I guess. But thank you for watching. As always, stay beautiful. And I will catch you next time on another episode or another adventure. Make sure to check out the channel. Check out... Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you're interested in more, the link shall be on screen so you can check out the rest of the series as well as the original Monster Palm. As always, have a wonderful evening. Stay beautiful, people. See ya.